I did this for what? To show off my Birkenstock? Um, bestie, I hope you do great. Um, I do great and I can't wait to share actually today's video because we are getting closer to a new season. It's getting closer to fall, sadly. I love, I absolutely love summer. You have to look into the future and I can't wait to actually get into fall because now it makes kind of sense to wear all my crocheted clothes and mittens that I've done because right now it's super hard to I cannot wear them actually I tried but and what I actually wanted to tell you guys I have a super nice fast and easy pattern for you guys since you know I love checkered patterns over everything actually but what I have right now to show you is the checkered mittens which I'm very very excited to share with you guys today I did them in two different colors this one is a little bit longer has smaller squares and the other one has bigger squares and um, is a little bit shorter I'm going to show you the whole process with this kind of pattern but as an alternative pattern, I'm going to show you this as well. Yeah, I hope you guys enjoy and I can't wait to jump right now into the DIY with you guys. Let's check it out. So regarding the materials, it's super easy. We are going to use a four millimeter hook this time. And um, I'm using the DK Light Worsted Yarn from it's a cotton yarn from Hooked. So this is the yarn and of course we're going to use a wool needle to fix everything up at the end. And that's actually it. You just need the pattern if you want to or you can just use this video as well. And it's up to you, but that's everything you're gonna need. This pattern is actually made of a ribbon it contains a ribbon and the hand part actually and the little hole part for the thumb. So what we are going to do first is we are going to start right off with the ribbon first. And for this we are going to decide on how wide we want to have the ribbon. For example on the black one I did it not as wide as I did it on the beige one. So you can decide on how many chain ups you want to do actually by defining your width of the ribbon. For the beige I'm going to chain up 12. For the black one I chain up 8. So it's up to you for you guys. If you want to do a wider one you chain up 12. If you want to do a less wider one then you chain up 8. So we chain up 12 and then we are going to directly um, go into the second loop and do our first single crochet this time. So the single crochet is we take our hook, we put it into the second hole, we yarn over, pull the yarn through, we have two loops on the hook and we yarn over and pull the yarn through the last two loops and this is your single crochet. We are going to repeat this whole process throughout the first row. We are going to finish our first row, we chain up one, we turn our work and then we are going to only crochet in the back loop only in the back loop with a single crochet. So we repeat the single crochet by putting our hook into the back loop, we yarn over, pull the yarn through, we have two loops on our hook, we yarn over, pull the yarn through and this is our single crochet for the second row. We complete the second row actually and chain up one, turn over, and then we are going to continue actually crocheting only in the back loop with our single crochets. You keep crocheting this for 27 rows um, it depends on how big your wrist is actually. Um, you keep crocheting this for 27 rows until you reach the 27th row. You should check if it's already fitting around your wrist. If not, you keep crocheting until it fits your wrist and you do the exact same process. <music> So when we are done, we are going to chain up one and now we are going to define our first row for the checkered 
pattern actually. Now we are going to set 27 single crochets into the side of our wristband. So at the end we have 27 single crochets to find to define our row to go up in the checkered pattern actually. So we chain up one and then we start crocheting into the side of our wristband to go back to the first row. You can define on where you want to apply actually your single crochets. I've used the big holes actually and it is very very important that you end up with 27 single crochets. If you decided to do more rows on your wristband, 30 for example, you have to take into consideration that when you set your first row of single crochets, you have to do the amount of single crochets that equals the amount of rows that you have on your wristband. So if you did 30 rows, you have to do 30 single crochets for the first row. So when you have reached the first row or the end of the first row, we are going to chain up two this time. Now we are going to define our checkered pattern actually. Since 27 um, is dividable by one part with six double crochets and three parts with seven double crochets, which end up 27 I think, we should be fine for our checkered pattern. So we are going to start to crochet with our first color of course. To chain up two, we start our double crochet this time. We yarn over first, we go into the two loops down below and make sure to have both loops this time on your hook, not only the back loop, both loops. You yarn over, pull the yarn through, you have three three loops on your hook, you yarn over, you pull the yarn through the first two loops, you yarn over and pull the yarn through the last two loops. And we are going to repeat this process for six times for the first color actually. And then we are changing up the color. So when you are at the sixth double crochet on, your, on the second row, we are going to stop the process before we are going to loop our yarn through the last two loops. So we keep that open and introduce our new color, which is in my case the white. And we are going to end this last double crochet, the sixth double crochet with the new yarn by introducing it and tying a knot to the excess yarn. And then we are going to repeat the whole process with the new yarn. This time it's very, very important because you guys sent me so many pictures of your checkered bags where you did it not correctly actually. So this is very, very important. You have to take the other color with you by putting it into your double crochet, not behind it, not in front of it, you put it into the double crochet. So we are going to continue with the new double crochet and um, with the new color by yarning over, put the hook through the two loops down below. Now we lay our color or other color yarn on top of these two loops. We yarn over, pull the yarn through, we have three loops on our hook, we yarn over, pull the yarn through the next two loops, we yarn over and pull it to the last two loops, closing our double crochet and we have the other color yarn in the double crochet. So we continue this whole process with double crocheting with the new color for seven more times and then at the seventh double crochet we just close it up with the new color again and you always can pull everything tight. So when you finished uh, the first row, the second row actually with your double crocheting pattern, um, to finally close the last double crochet, we close it with both strings and then we are deciding which color we want to choose next. In this case, it's the same color as I used in the same in, in the row below, so it's the white. So I chain up two with the white, turn my work and do the same exact pattern again. Since we are deciding to do big squares on this pattern actually, we are going to do seven double crochets with white, seven double crochet with beige, seven double crochet with white, and then six double crochets with beige again for this third row actually. Finishing our with both strings, chain up two, deciding which color we want to go with. So for the beige one, I decided to do big squares and for the big squares, you're going to need three rows for the same color actually to build the square. For the other one I did smaller squares with five stitches each. I only did two rows in order to build the square. When we finish the third row we are going to finish it with both strings again and now we are going to change up the color actually. So this is finally the part where you change up the color with the beige. You're not chaining up with the white, you're chaining up with the beige. Always make sure to take the yarn with you and putting it inside of your double crochet. Even if you turn your work, you have to put it inside and 
that's actually the whole process of this pattern actually you're going to continue this whole process for 11 rows you can actually decide on yourself on how long you want to build your mitten actually if you want to have it a little bit longer you are going to do more rows of course for this one i did 14 rows actually and for this one only 11. so you can decide on that if you're wondering i did 11 rows on this but i decided to have three rows for the first checkered part then four rows for the second checkered part and then four rows again for the last checkered part and now you can decide if you want to close up your mitten and have it already done like this one or you can even add a little ribbing on top of your mittens so as for the ribbon actually on top we are going to do, or what I did is actually, I decided to do the same color as the ribbing down below. So we are going to finish up the white right now. For this, we are going to chain up two, uh, we are going to chain up one actually with both of the strings. And now we are going to use the white string to pull it long. And then we cut only the white string and pull the yarn through and tie a little knot. For this, we are going to now work only with the black yarn in my case. So now you have to decide on how wide you want to do your top ribbing actually. I decided to only do four chain ups in order to define the width or the length of my top ribbing actually. But this is also up to you on how wide you want to have it. So I decided to chain up four more chain ups with the black. When you are done with the four chain ups, you're going to turn your work and this is a little bit tricky now because you have the whole cloth on down below hanging so you're going to chain up four turn your work and now you are going to only in the back loop to add single crochet stitches four single crochet stitches only in the back loop and we are going to work the process until we hit the ending of our mitten cloth again and then we are connecting the ending with a simple slip stitch to connect those parts actually and then we chain up one and add four uh, single crochets in the back loop again in order to go up again chain up one turn your work and go back down again only putting four single crochets in the back loop and then we are going to attach this part two stitches like we leave out one of the loop one of the stitches and attach it to the second stitch again every time you're going to connect these ribbing parts with a simple slip stitch to the mittens part you leave out one stitch and add it to the second stitch you're going to continue this whole process until you've reached the end of your mitten and then we are starting actually the closing process So as for the closing process actually, if you decided to do no ribbing or with ribbing, it's the same process. We are chaining up one to the part where we stopped actually, chain up one and now we are turning our work actually and close or fold our mittens in, into half. Now we are going to connect these parts like the back part with the front part by sim simply doing single crochets. So we are going to chain up one and then we are going to single stitch them together by putting our yarn through both of the sides, yarn over, we pull the yarn through, we have two loops on our hook and then we yarn over again and close this single crochet. And we have to define where you want to have your thumb. So now you, you have to actually check out how long your mitten is and where you want to have your thumb part. For me, it was working out very well to leave out the second square only for the thumb part, then close up the sides again. So for the thumb part, we simply just leave out our closing part process and then we start closing again for the, the ribbing part and stuff like that. When you reach the part where you want to have your thumb, you only do single crochets to one of your sides and then you start crocheting, uh, start connecting your single crochets again with the other side to close your mitten 
until you reach the end and then we are going to turn it of course inside out because we want to have the seam inside of it and try it on and of course you only have done one mitten now so you have to repeat the whole process again by using the same pattern actually the same technique you can put them on both sides actually so it doesn't matter there's no right and left and now we're going to check out how it looks in the final result <laughs> you like this video um, I really much enjoyed the process because it's super fast it's a super cool idea of doing this as a present for the upcoming birthdays for your friends for your family for Christmas for example I can't wait to wear them actually when it makes sense when the weather is getting colder a little bit and it makes sense and I don't sweat my ass off and um, yeah I hope you guys like this little tutorial um, I can't wait to be back in the next video and yeah make sure to subscribe and give some thumbs up if you like this video and make sure to check me out on my social media um, of course if you want to and I can't wait to be back in the next video bestie um, keep sending me your cool crocheting projects on my social media I really like to see them all and if you do try these mittens please tag me or send me a dm on how you've done and i can't wait to actually see your results and yeah i hope you guys have a good day good night good morning wherever and whenever you want to watch this video so ciao